the important thing is the limit invasive procedures and uh, discourage piercing tattooing as you said any wound in the skin has to be clear disinfection and dental oral hygiene that's it okay Actually, Dr. Adnan, that was not road sport. Road sport is only fundoscopic finding. Yeah, that one. Uh, uh, first, I told this conjectival. Uh, conjectival hemorrhage it is. Yes, he hemorrhage right. yeah, yeah, hemorrhage is. Yeah. I told this one. Then Dr. Noor asked me, what is this? Again, then I said, maybe this is, he wanted to know me. <laughs> then I told, the road sports is only for, from the fundoscopy. Fundoscopy. Yeah, and other things, the only three organisms, because actually, as uh, uh, Dr. Noor said, we have to first diagnose, uh, find out the with uh, uh, its primary or its secondary. Primary means uh, he has uh, uh, valve, uh, this native wall uh, or uh, uh, native wall. So the Streptococcus viridiens is the most common. And other prosthetic or uh, drug abusers, uh, these Streptococcus yes. aureus. And if he has any genitourinary operation, any so uh, he has uh, this entire caucus. So easy to memorize. Can you tell again? Yeah, if, if, if he has a native wall, just like a primary, no cardiac pathology, nothing. So streptococcus viridians is the most common. It is simple uh, sensitive benzyl penicillin and gentamicin. Gentamicin we are using as a, synergetic effect and uh, regarding other the prosthetic wall drug abuser this uh, indwelling catheter this pota cath or center lines just like this one so there are chances for staphylococcus aureus so where we are using vancomycin and the pampicin plus gentamicin Yeah. See again uh, in the this the most common staph aureus the most common is flu cloxacillin. But whenever you suspect MRSA, just say vancomycin. That's it. Always remember in staph aureus, uh, your choice will be flu cloxacillin. But whenever there is a you, you there is MRSA, you will go for vancomycin. Okay. And always this prosthetic valve will have more antibiotics. Three at least three if it is prosthetic valve. That is vancomycin, rifampicin, and gentamicin in case of uh, staph aureus. And the other thing, it is uh, microbial, it is the infectious disease uh, department or infectious disease doctor, you can say. Uh, the microbiologists are just to give you the organism that is called the decision of antibiotics. Uh, and uh, the after the... Or uh, the word used is infection specialist in the uh, in the patient info. So use this yeah. use this word, cardiologist okay, okay. and infection specialist. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you don't okay. know anything? Just add to that and add specialist. I have seen like this, like uh, mm. uh, even in explaining to the mother. If you want, if you don't remember anything. Uh, you can just uh, tell that uh, region name and tell the specialist to it like that. Yeah, because they are the one who has to decide the duration, choice of antibiotics, everything accordingly. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. are... yeah. have to remember for main organisms like Staph aureus and Streptococcus. For Streptococcus, I think benzathine, benzylpencillin, and also in cases of, uh, and also can be considered ceftriaxone also. Any one, either benzyl penicillin or ceftriaxone. Uh, for oh. staph aureus, as I said, if uh, normal flu cloxacillin, if MRSA, vancomycin. Okay. Uh, but for prosthetic valve, always three antibiotics. You can go with vancomycin, gentamicin, and rifampicin. This you remember for uh, pro empirical therapy. Next, we can do no? Yeah, yeah, we can go for the next one. Okay, Dr. Jasser, give. Who is the now candidate? Me? You will be the candidate and Dr. Jasser is the role player. Dr. Uh, Jasser, you can give the case. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. I think he Dr. sent a photo, but I did not see it. Uh, yeah, that's I will check now and post here. 
Yeah, yeah, I sent the picture to Dr. Noor. Uh, Dr. Noor, can you share? Give, give the case also. I will okay. keep the time. Okay. There is one, uh, yeah. I shared already the picture. Okay, there is another one. Okay, see, both the pictures now, I think it is taking time. So one, one I will just... Uh, uh, see the findings okay. one and then go to the another one okay 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 so give the okay, case this, also. yeah okay. In the case uh, and keep four minutes time yeah this uh, uh one week old uh, baby uh presented with the respiratory distress and shortness of breath do cardiovascular examination and the relevant okay your okay. time start okay Is there any name for the child? John. John. Okay. Uh, we can start. No problem. There is time left, Dr. Adnan. Yes, 45 Maybe. seconds. 40 seconds? Yeah. You no can problem. Start now. You can start. Keep six minutes, okay? Okay, okay. You can start now. Good morning. This is Dr. Noor, one of the children's doctor in this hospital. I will wash my hands, greet to the mother and uh, ex start examining John. Uh, so uh, uh, from the universal queue, I can see that the join is, uh, John is intubated. He is, uh, he, and also there is IV cannulation and he's attached to the uh, monitors. Uh, and maybe he's on some ventilatory support. Okay, uh, so uh, I would like to check his weight, height, and put him on the uh, head circumference and put him on the appropriate uh, growth chart. 
and also i want to look for any unusual features uh, from the universal cue i can see that there is swelling in the neck there is a there is swelling in the neck and also there is short uh, uh, fourth and fifth metacarpal and also there is swelling in the feet uh so and uh, i want to check any other devices apart from this attached and anything in the surroundings yeah he has a monitor and he is attached to the mechanical ventilator okay uh then i will i, I would like to start my examination with the hands to look for pallor clubbing cyanosis and uh, stigmata of infective endocarditis like osler's nodes genves lesions and splinter hemorrhages he uh, is pale okay pallor uh then i want to check his pulse for rate rhythm volume character and at the same time i want to check Uh, and in this child i will check brachial pulse brachial pulse and brachio brachial delay and also brachio femoral delay there is a uh, radio femoral delay and the pulse is uh, this uh, uh, left side pulse is poor and right side is normal uh, and also the left side brachial pulse is poor yeah okay uh then uh, i want to check uh, the eyes for pallor uh, and any jaundice or cyanosis pallor is there okay then i would like to check for mouth for any central cyanosis high arched palate and uh... no nothing okay then in the neck i want to check for any visible pulsations in the neck no no then i would like to check i would like i would like to inspect the chest uh, for any distress and any deformities in the chest scars and any visible pulsations nothing child is intubated and mechanical ventilator okay then palpation i would like to put both my hands on the on the chest of the baby to locate the apex beat and wherever i feel the maximum thrust i will locate the apex beat it is in the uh, fifth intercostal space lateral to the mid clavicular line and uh, uh, it is uh, heaving in character and it is on the left side okay and i would like to palpate, uh, palpate for with my heel of the hand for the parasternal heave in the lower left sternal edge and also would like to check for the thrill in all the four areas that is the apical area left lower sternal area and right upper sternal edge and left upper sternal edge there is a, a palpable thrill in the uh, suprasternal area okay suprasternal area uh, and also i would like to check if the heart, any heart sounds are palpable no then i would like to proceed for auscultation i will again auscultate in all the four areas that is the apical left lower sternal edge right upper uh, sternal edge and left upper sternal edge for any uh, for s1 s2 uh, any murmurs and radiation of the murmurs to uh, axilla neck and back there is a uh, there is a, a systolic murmur in the uh, left upper sternal border and that radiates to back uh, systolic murmur in the left upper sternal border radiating to back okay uh, and also i want to auscultate over the carotids to see if i can he hear any um, murmur there radiation of murmur and also uh, no no back. there is no no okay um, then i want to check for the hepatomegaly in the abdomen there is there is 4 uh, cm liver um, in the uh, below the coastal margin okay uh, then i want to check for the pedal pedal edema and also any scars in the lateral side or the back side no scar okay then uh, in order to complete my sorry i would like to auscultate his uh, lung bases for any crepts there are crepitations okay uh, so in order to complete my examination 
uh, I would like to take the detailed history and vital signs of this child, including the four limb blood pressure and preductal and postductal oxygen saturations, and also check in the femoral area for any femoral scars, um, and also to check for any. I think that's all. I will present the case. Okay, six minutes. Okay, uh, yeah. so to, today I examined John, a one week old baby uh, who is presenting with uh, uh, pallor and he has his, uh, there is a brachiobrachial delay, the left brachial pulse is weak and also there is brachiofemoral uh, delay and on inspection uh, on, uh, on on palpation, the apex beat is in fifth intercostal space, lateral to mid clavicular line. And on Oscar, on palpation, there is a thrill in the left upper sternal edge. And also on auscultation, there is an systolic murmur in the left upper sternal edge, radiating to back. And there is four centimeters uh, hepatomegaly below the costal margin and basal crepts. Uh, with these findings, this child has a a uh, complex congenital heart disease, uh, complex congenital heart disease, mostly acyanotic with, uh, with some uh, features of heart failure and with murmur in the left upper sternal area radiating to back and ra with radio, uh, sorry, with brachial delay and brachiofemoral delay. Most probably this is a case of uh, coarctation iota with some syndromic features like uh, swelling in the nape of the neck and the legs and short fourth and fifth metacarpal. Mostly a case of Turner syndrome with uh, coarctation of iota. What could be the differential diagnosis? Differential diagnosis here, uh, since the baby is uh, presenting with the shock and in the one week of the child, I would like to keep the uh, left-sided duct-dependent lesions like uh, critical aortic stenosis, uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Anyone more? Uh, Less likely here right-sided lesions because the child has no cyanosis. Okay. How will you investigate? Mm, for investigations, uh, uh, I would like to involve my... I would like to stabilize this child because this child is in uh, shock and uh, uh, they present with the features of shock. So I would like to do the ABC vital, stabilize the child and involve my consultant and cardiologist as well. And I want to do the basic uh, septic workup, CBC, CRP, blood cultures. And at the same time, I want to do the urgent echocardiogram to, to find out the lesions. And if this, child, if lesion, if this lesion is drug dependent, I want to start on the prostaglandins. You can continue okay. time over. Okay. I want to start on the prostaglandins involving the neonatal intensivist. Uh, and also, uh, I want to do ECG and chest x-ray. Okay. What do you want to see in chest x-ray? In chest x uh, I, uh, in chest x-ray, I think there will be pulmonary oligemia and also there can be cardiomegaly. In, if there is the... Okay. This Next. child is in failure, so... Okay. And uh, what you found on uh, echocardiogram ECG? Mm. ECG, there can be mild features of left ventricular hypertrophy, but still uh, it is, the child is, is very small for these changes to develop. Okay. And uh, uh, next, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to, if this is diagnosed as a duct dependent lesion, I want to start prostaglandin and refer him to the cardiologist and the tertiary center if the urgent surgery is needed. What are the surgical options? 
uh, surgical option in this children will be uh, they can do an open heart surgery with the cutting the uh, coarctation part and end to end anastomosis usually the children small children present with preductal uh, coarctation of aorta so they need uh, emergency surgery and also there can be a subclavian flap repair uh, or uh, in rare cases, if there is difficult to operate, they can do balloon valve valve water. It means balloon dilatation of the coarctation. Okay, what are the complications of the procedure? Can be bleeding. The surgery. There can be bleeding okay, around. Sir. Okay. And uh, infection. Okay. So answer all your questions, <laughs> because maybe I don't okay, know. No problem. At, just like uh, hypertension and uh, re uh, recurrent coagulation, the most common. Okay. Let, all let, the surgeries. Uh, no, let's go from the start. So mm -hmm. uh, give your comments. Anything I missed in my examination? You did everything. Uh, uh, nothing is just uh, just like uh, the back and at the end while you think you say, but it is uh, no, no problem. Uh, only um, uh, just uh, I forgot one thing you told. Um, uh, the chest x-ray, there, there is chances of pneumonia are there. Because this is outflow, left outflow obstruction, not right outflow obstruction. Mm. So, so the lungs are over overfilled with fluid. So there are pulmonary edema and, uh, and, and uh, pneumonia are there. And third, uh, differential, your favorite sepsis. Okay, wait, wait. I got confused actually. Here there will be oligemia or edema. There is edema. So oligemia is in right outflow tract obstructions. Yeah. I will tell uh, Dr. Noor, if there is right out outflow tract obstruction is there with any reason, then there will be on the chest X-ray will be oligemia. And if there is left, uh, left sided outflow tract obstruction is there, so there can be a pop, uh, probably of Poly uh, this uh, yeah edema or polygemic uh, lungs like polycythemic. But in in coctation of aorta there is obstruction. But in coctation of aorta mostly uh, uh, X-rays are coming normal. Mostly X-rays are coming normal. Okay. Except pulmonary edema can be there. But if the child is old enough. Like mm -hmm. this was only one day, so there will be nothing in the X-ray. But if the child is old enough, there can be rib notching, can be there. Yeah, but rib notching. Rib also cardiomegaly and also cardiomegaly, right? In older children. Yeah, that will be in the old patient. Mm. Yeah. Cardiomegaly hair can be seen. Left ventricular hypertrophy can be seen even in one day patient old, because this is by birth. So this is uh, in the womb is coming this coarctation. So that can be developed. But other findings like rib notching will be late, later on. And uh, this will be a uh, pulmonary edema finding you can find in the chest x-ray. So I can tell One maybe more. cardiomegaly and pulmonary edema I can say in the chest x-ray for this child. Yeah, you can say if they are specifically. I don't think so they will ask because it's non-specific findings are coming. Mm. Uh, it's not related to coaptation actually mm. this is for the left uh, obstruction is there so one more thing uh, actually I was looking for timing so I could not listen maybe you have uh, done that one uh, but whenever the child is coming new net mm. so always comment first well looking sick looking alert any any jaundice, any cyanosis, or any uh, like d, d status of dehydration, always comment. These five, six things always should be comment, in the, especially in the new net. Because mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, this uh, unusual features okay that will be definitely so these are the five things and when you have find this one uh, there is coctation so always in for the coctation what we will say you have you have told that one i have listened like uh, radio radial delay radio femoral yeah, delay the same time and predoxal brachial doctor. right in the in this child we will say brachial because it is uh... yeah yeah the new net brachial yeah. so brachial uh, delay brachio radial delay and you will have to tell about the uh, the same time don't say that i will check blood pressure at the end no because this is clearly if they they have told that yes there is brachio radial delay is there so i would further i would like to check the uh, four limb blood pressure four limb uh, saturation pre ductal and post ductal saturation and one more thing which in the beginning i forget to tell always comment on the capillary refill time uh, and uh, yes. yeah capillary refill time should be this, this is uh, yes. for the dehydration and we are checking where capillary refill time on the shins or on the sternum yes. for the new nerves yes sternum uh, i did yeah. this with sri devi and i myself forgot <laughs> if you so remember so these are the for the new net new net for the beginning is too much like uh, uh, okay infective endocarditis clubbing cyanosis that is we are doing for all everyone we will have to comment on the vitally stable or not child is well looking sick looking he's pale his color is uh, blue or dusky color his uh, uh, jaundiced or not capillary refill time he's dehydrated or not then the saturation i would like to check the vitals i would like to check the saturations i would like to check uh, this is for all the and there is specific for aortic stenosis hypoplastic left heart syndrome or the coctation i would like to check for the four limb blood pressure i would like to check the four limb uh, the saturation i would like to check for the brachio brachial and brachio femoral delay then you will go for the further and uh, then for definitely unusual feature even if you are not finding any unusual feature and they have not given you clue and this is going for coctation or aortic stenosis or bicuspid aortic valve you are thinking that can be so then you will have to tell that i would like to check for if the child is puffy or he is having any sign uh, this uh, edema mm. so this one then then but uh, again others were okay other was okay mm. other was no yeah yeah you are right uh, capillary refill time is very important here and also always we can put, put sepsis as differential diagnosis when he asked what else i have told sepsis right here clear cut your case was coctation so better uh, keep two from the cardiac like hypoplasty you told yeah critical aortic stenosis that is that will be good Uh, leave this hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Uh, and uh, so I uh, always I last time I forgot to tell Doctor uh, uh, Yasser. Always start your presentation like this. This is a case of uh, complex congenital heart disease. Whether it is cyanotic or acyanotic, you can tell by the presence of cyanosis. Right? I, I don't know. I don't know. We can say here complex congenital because uh, complex is part. complex is coming for at least two lesions so for coctation i don't know we can say because there is one lesion only complex but sometimes, but, you know the coctation will also be associated with aortic stenosis right bicuspid aortic stenosis and here the murmur of the coctation where do we hear is it in the left upper second intercostal space or below the right uh, left left uh, Uh, clavicular coctation coctation murmur coctation murmur is coming uh, left sternal edge uh, it's Actually, coming it comes Below infra infra scapular ideal position is infra scapular yeah basically ideal position is radiating to Back. the scapula okay left infra scapular yeah is the uh, loudest you hear in that region and radiating to back now here my clue here there can be some confusion for the candidate if the if there is a systolic murmur in the left upper sternal edge 
but the it is not radiating to carotids so this means the radiation to back is giving me the clue as coarctation of aorta this is what i understood here yes right. suppose if this was radiating to carotids then i will tell aortic stenosis since here yes, if no it is radiating yeah this radiated to carotid not radiating to back then you can say this will be critical aortic stenosis yeah in since here the radiation though i hear the murmur in the left upper sternal edge since it is radiating to the back i will consider it as coarctation of aorta and uh, the, when when i got this finding i should have told him that i would also like to auscultate in below the left uh, subclavicular area i should tell like this after this finding if not routinely what do you say uh, what what please uh, Yes. Okay. Now, usually, what we are telling, we are telling the four areas: apical, uh -huh. left lower sternal edge, right upper sternal edge, and left upper sternal edge. But when we get a finding like this, going with coarctation, radiating to back, I will tell that I would also like to palpate left infrascapular area to hear the murmur better, like this. Only yes, you will say you will say the back, axilla, and the carotid. All three things you will say. Hmm. No, but uh, for coarctation, particularly, I should say left infra scap, infra uh, sorry, infra clavicular area, right? Uh, yes, this is this is can sometimes you know uh, they have sent this RCPCH. Uh, he she examiner said in the this example is there for the coarctation. She said that this is the murmur is left upper sternal edge. Mm. She did not tell that infra clavicular. Mm -hmm. So I am telling you, a different examiner, different things are saying. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind, infraclavicular can be there, left external edge can be there, but it is mostly will be radiate to the back. That will be the tip of the scapula, which Dr. Yasser told. So that will be differentiating point here. Radiating to back, uh, to left towards below the left scapula usually, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, intrascapular mostly point. toward uh, in, in, intrasca, interscapular in the lower side, mostly towards the left. It is. Yes. Okay. okay. So I'll be like this. Okay. If time finish for you, if you want to go, you can go. No problem. No, no, no problem. We, I think we finished today, but innocent murmur, I don't know. I think no need for innocent murmur. It's okay. We can read it and it's just, it will be a normal child with just- Yeah, just to, to memorize you, memorize for all you, I will tell you two, three things. For the innocent murmur, as everybody knows, this one, there will be five uh, or seven S's there. This will be soft. This will be of uh, systolic. This will be of- uh, uh, uh like uh, what we say this not uh, uh, change change with the position okay change with position for this uh, any site and uh, one as is soft systolic and uh, what i forgot so there are four kind of uh, murmurs of uh, innocent there can be venous hum, there can be still murmur, there can be pulmonary flow murmur, there can be uh, this vascular flow murmur. Mm. Still murmur is coming on the uh, still murmur is coming on the left lower sternal edge. Left lower sternal edge. Okay, pulmonary flow murmur is coming on the left upper sternal edge. Mm. And the venous murmur, uh, sorry, this uh, vascular murmur can be anywhere and uh, this uh, venous yes. hum is coming usually in the neck on the right side usually mm. in the neck usually com coming supra clavi clavicular yes and yes. yeah this these these are the things so mm, this one uh, you'll have to see this and there is no radiation of murmur another yeah, no radiation no radiation and there can be change yeah. with the position, uh, no problem. But there will be yeah. thrill, no thrill, no thrill. No thrill, no radiation. It will be soft systolic murmur, never diastolic. And in venous hum, it can be continuous murmur. 
Yes, Venus hum is the only one where we can find the diastolic component. Mm. Yeah, means it is both systolic and diastolic together. That is continuous. Oh, so this one is soft, systolic, short, and S one, S two will be normal. Special test will be normal, symptomless, and standing, sitting changes with position. These are R S. So okay, to systolic send, short. Send this yes sir in the group better. Yeah yeah I will send I will right send no problem. Right and it will be good. good. Okay. We all will remember. Yeah. Okay. So far this if you are thinking this is uh, innocent murmur, always ask about the timing. It means this is systolic or diastolic. Always uh, think about the location. Ask about the location. Quality of the murmur like this is uh, soft. Harsh or what? Intensity of the murmur that will be usually two by six, maximum three by six, but mostly two by six. And there is click or not. So these are the things which we will have to ask from the examiner. Is there any click or not? So there will be no click. I will send in the group all this. Okay, no problem. So actually, okay, then uh, cases you have tomorrow we will do. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow I am free. If you all are free, we will do no problem. Same time. Okay, send uh, to. So I think here we can also write the, the yes seven s. He will send. It will be easier to remember. Uh, one will be asymptomatic. You will have normal heart sounds, and it will be either systolic or continuous, and never diastolic. they do not radiate they vary with position and respiration okay there is a position they will vary here he has given right for each murmur how they will vary with position and respiration and they are soft always grade 1 to 3 never more than 3 that means no thrill a normal ecg and chest x ray so the most common you can see is the pulmonary flow murmur very common characteristically it is brief and in mid systole uh, loudest with patient lying down and during expiration so this is what he was telling when do you hear this loudest is in the lying down position and but uh, usually the pulmonary murmurs is on inspiration right this is the exception or we have to check this maybe as i know uh, the right sided murmurs are uh, they become loudest with inspiration Yeah, yeah. This also confusing me, and I think so. It's during inspiration. It's wrong information. Yeah, yeah. We have to check this uh, because otherwise it's confusing. But anyways, remember, lying down it will increase, and also during inspiration we can check in some other source. Uh, occurs in children and adolescent of all ages. Commonly heard. Uh, okay, so they can occur in anywhere, and we have to remember hyperdynamic states such as fever, anemia, and thyrotoxicosis. then uh, still murmur is another one 3 to 8 years of age the child and as they grow adolescence it will be resolved uh, one to grade 1 to 3 present in early systole heart sounds are normal maximum intensity between left lower sternal edge and apex so usually we say left lower sternal edge but can be in anywhere in between the left sternal edge and the apex and vibratory in nature uh, so when do we hear this best uh, so we, i think we hear this in the sitting position and lying down position because on standing up he is telling it reduces or disappears and also on valsalva maneuver if we ask the child to do valsalva maneuver that is taking deep breath and holding there will be uh, reduced intensity or disappearing or when the child stands up so i think sitting and lying down we can hear this right so for both uh, pulmonary and uh, stills murmur we can hear that we can the, the the murmur is best heard in lying down position we can remember like this what do you say hello yeah yeah i can hear you yeah so i no i am telling you the point to remember here the pulmonary flow murmur and the stills murmur both of them 
uh, we can make it as uh, best heard in lying position. Because here also he is telling that when the patient stands up or carries out well salva maneuver, it disappears. And here he is telling that it's. Oh, this is you see. This is against that one. Uh, yeah. Against this one because this uh, still murmur description is against the pulmonary uh, flow murmur that increasing with the uh, standing up. No, the pulmonary murmur decrease. Sorry, the stills murmur decreases when the patient stands up. Yeah, in that pulmonary means... it increasing. Okay, 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 okay. No, 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 okay, no, no. You no, are no. right. No, no. Yeah, I'm... yeah, understand. One understand. Point, I'm telling. May let's make <clears throat> ourselves easy. When the murmur is lo heard loudest, both pulmonary and stills in lying position. Because here yeah, he yeah. loudest in lying position, here he is telling while stand up, it will be disappear. So lying and sitting. Okay. So next okay. is the venous hum. This is the only innocent murmur that has diastolic component. High frequency continuous murmurs most commonly heard in children two to six years. Here he told three to eight years. So more commonly we can keep it as in general uh, two to eight years. Okay. Best heard over supraclavicular fossa on the right side with head turned to the other side. They mostly radiate and is often heard on both the sides. Okay, may radiate and it means both the sides means we can hear both on the right uh, supraclavicular and left supraclavicular. I think this is what he's telling. Uh, sometimes associated with thrill disappears. Uh, so this is the only murmur which is associated with thrill and also is continuous murmur and has a diastolic component. And uh, this is the opposite one. Both pulmonary and stills murmur will be loudest in lying down, but this will disappear on lying down flat and neck murmur. So this is the opposite here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, for coarctation to prepare the case from where you read. Wait, wait, wait. One minute. So here what he has written, chest extra usually normal in juxta ductal coarctation unless it does not present until after first decade where there may be mild to moderate cardiac enlargement due to left ventricular prominence and rib notching occurs in children in long standing more than seven years so usually in this maybe this child can be normal or due to there is heart failure you can see pulmonary edema or some cardiomegaly uh, otherwise you will see this rib notching in late presentation and also left ventricular prominence how many types of PDA, uh, this coarctation of aorta? Here he has given two. One is, uh -huh. as I told you, I told you during this, you see, uh, that uh, there is one case came in the communication, if you remember. The child was 11 years old, okay? That means... Now, in he, your case, what do you think? Which type of uh, PDA uh, coarctation of aorta? I told you preductal. In my case, it was... Preductal. Pre yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In my case, it was preductal because uh, this will just because it's com is normal in just a ductal. That's why I want to clear you. Mm. The chest X ray is normal in just a ductal, but in preductal, because you know the patient is in failure due to the lung pathology involvement, because uh, all the blood volume not going forward, going backward, mm. and backward are the store is the lung veins, they will backflow into pulmonary veins. So there will be pulmonary. Yeah, edema. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I was telling. Echocardiography. Also and they, um, the treatment is very good written here. Hmm. Yeah, this one. Surgical treatment. Usually subclavian uh, flap or graft or end-to-end -end anastomosis can be used to repair abnormal segment. Repair it through left-sided thoracotomy if aortic arch is on normal side. This is also very important. If aortic uh, arch is 
normal then it will be left sided thoracotomy so the normal aortic arch is left left turned right right aortic arch is abnormal so left side it is it is normal so complications include they can have residual hypertension and recorrection so after even the end to end anastomosis there can be recorrection yeah that's true because fibrostenosis you know we are doing a surgery na the fibrosis can do Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So either we can apply flap or either we can because we have to cut and then we have to anastomose. You know, wherever there is um, some uh, intervention, fibrosis or strictures are there. Like scarring, scarring. Yeah, yeah, you can say scarring. Mm, so, they, so I think they will give this flap or graft here. So, and also if there is this recortation, it can be treated with balloon dilatation. Balloon dilatation. Although they may require further surgery. So, fl subclavian flap repair uh, causes the loss of pulse in the left arm. So, whenever there is this flap repair, there can be left arm pulse reduced. Uh, so, in older children, uh, like, like for example, this juxta duxtal, this jex juxta ductal coarctation i think you can use the stent by cardiac catheterization but these children what you presented today i think they need open heart surgery right yeah that's the reason here written more than more than 10 years older children yes older children more than 10 years we can try with uh, uh, means dilatation of the coarctation and stent like cardiac catheterization with dilatation like balloon, uh, RTO, balloon, aorta. No, no, simple, you can, we can put in, uh, stunt, uh, stunt can keep the potency of the uh, vessel. But, but still, if there is, uh, means narrowing, you have to dilate it, right? No, 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 no need. Mm. And, and dilatation only for, for those post-procedure stenosis. Mm -hmm. Any recurrent, uh, recurrent coarctation is for balloon dilatation. But mm -hmm. the one older child, we need only stunting. Stunt has a capability to expand. Okay. And also the in the arteries and also there will be the elastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Elasticity. Elastic more. Issue, so they can yeah. Uh, dilate. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Only stent by cardiac catheterization. Otherwise, we will remember that in small children, they need open heart surgery. Yeah. Okay. As in our case, inspection, look for dysmorphic features like Turner syndrome. I think it was very nicely given. Any other dysmorphic features you can tell we see in the children apart from what was given in the picture? No, no, because this uh, child was low, uh, child was uh, small. I will share you one uh, book, Dr. Al Samad. It's very good uh, where you also you can go through this scenario. Actually, the scenario most of the time comes with the scar in mm -hmm. small children. Mm -hmm. But I think so that was difficult to for you and others. So, but just go through that one. It also helps you. Okay. You can send me the page number and book. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. I will send you the book and the page number. Okay. As Dr. Adnan said, he told rightly that the scenario can come in three ways, right? No, no, he was telling for AVSD, not for this case. Okay, tell me this case, what is the other way the scenario can come, coarctation of iota? The only, only three way. This one is normal, just a pre-failure, one with post-procedure and one adult one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now one was this, what, what you gave was a neonate. You can present in an emergency. Okay. Then? Then, then post-surgical. Any small baby having surgery. Okay, small baby means like uh, these, these surgeries are emergency, right? Yeah, yeah, that means that this baby has a surgery and after surgery, he has some complication. 
लाइक लाइक रिकॉर्डेशन और हाइपरटेंशन या या जस्ट लाइक दिस वन ओके एंड एक्चुअली दे वांट टू आस्क द मार्फन सिंड्रोम सॉरी टर्नर सिंड्रोम इन डेट दे आर नॉट कंसर्न विद दिस कॉक्टेशन जस्ट टू डायग्नोसिस बट दे टुक वाइवा ऑफ दिस टर्नर सिंड्रोम इन एनी एग्जाम इट केम लाइक दिस या 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 Mm. Okay, in that book it is given the, how the uh, yeah yeah everything given I will send you. Okay okay. So pulses here, right radial pulse is normal. Uh, so we will compare the left radial uh, radial pulses or in the children brachial pulses. So there can be left radial pulse may be absent or there can be delay if. but delay will happen when the collaterals will develop to start with it can be absent right and femoral pulses may be weak or absent also and uh, radio femoral delay will happen only in older children when they will have uh, collaterals as i understand the delays will happen with collaterals but in acute cases there will be absent or weak pulse yes or no yeah yeah Uh, so scars none un so scars none unless there has been a repair it is likely that you if you see a case in the exam it will be post repair that is usually what is the scar we see for coarctation of repair is left thoracotomy scar we have to remember this left thoracotomy scar one of the differentials we give is the coarctation of aorta okay if the scar is associated with reduced uh, left radial pulse volume think of subclavian flap repair and also when there is scar and also the left sided radial pulse is reduced we can think of subclavian flap repair so pa palpation apex beat is usually normally placed no heaves no thrills auscultation as you said systolic murmur is loudest at the back left interscapular area so but you in the left interscapular area usually it is towards the lower part right lower part of the scapula yeah 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 hmm alternatively the murmur may be non specific or absent ejection click at the upper left sternal edge if there is bicuspid aortic valve yeah this also can be there we can hear when we hear a click in the area we can suspect bicuspid aortic valve along with coarctation of aorta if there is this finding there may be diastolic murmur from collaterals in older patients okay this collaterals diastolic murmur where do we hear in older patients well i, I think Have I have no idea because this is collateral in the abdominal area. Yeah, let's just check this where we hear so that maybe if they ask or something. So could be directed at looking for evidence of Turner syndrome. Very important. Offer to do four limb blood pressure measurement. This is also very important. Associations of coarctation is Turner syndrome, bicuspid aortic valve in seventy percent. Over half of the patient with coarctation have other lesions. Uh, we have to also check for other lesions like ventricular septal defect mitral valve abnormalities aortic stenosis okay uh, why i said here uh, i don't know whether we can say this complex congenital or not um, because sometimes even though the coarctation of aorta it can have some associations this is my doubt and vsd may not present early in the life like one week right so let me see which thing sorry huh? vsd yeah vsd will present later i am telling you the coarctation of aorta can be associated with ventricular septal defect he has written here so any coarctation of aorta case can be just a simple coarctation or can be a complex congenital heart disease also you cannot say i am telling you uh, we have uh, 10 more minutes 
we'll go to something in pediatric guidelines so that uh, I think we can cover something. So what are the symptoms we see in life-threatening asthma is a cyanosis and pallor, decreased air entry and silent chest, poor respiratory effort, altered <coughs> conscious level, irritable, exhausted, SpO2 less than 92% in the air, FE, PE. PEF less than 33% in those aged more than five years. So patients with severe or life-threatening attacks may not be distressed and may not have all these abnormalities. Presence of any of these should alert the doctor. So the differential diagnosis for severe asthma attack will be inhaled foreign body, could be pneumonia, could be pneumothorax, and aspiration and cystic fibrosis. Yeah. Again, inhaled foreign body, pneumonia, pneumothorax, aspiration and cystic fibrosis. Next is the acute asthma management. Uh, so for asthma management assessment, we have to record respiratory rate and effort, the recessions, that is the suprasternal, subcoastal and intercoastal recessions, then heart rate, then air entry, then oxygen saturation in air, then if more than five years peak expiratory flow meter, then consciousness level, if chest x-ray, if severe and life-threatening signs and symptoms do not improve with medical management. Do not take any samples for routine blood test or routine blood gas and routine chest x-ray is unnecessary. So routine blood test, blood gas and chest x-ray is unnecessary in a child with asthma. So the immediate treatment, follow algorithm, management of acute wheezing in children. Prescribe oxygen and drug chart if required. Senior assessment. If you are worried about child's consciousness level and there is no response to nebulized salbutamol or poor respiratory effort, call senior doctor for further assessment. That is, you will put an IV line, initial bolus of salbutamol IV or five minutes. So if the child is, the consciousness level is not good, if the child's consciousness level is not good and there is no response to nebulized salbutamol, or poor respiratory effort, I will call the senior doctor for further assessment. I will start the IV line and I will start the salbutamol IV or five minutes. So what's the dose? Less than two years, five micrograms per kg. More than two years, 15 micrograms per kg. This is the IV dose. Or I will use 500 micrograms per ml injection preparation dilute to this is not needed so i will start with iv salbutamol then not responding within 15 minutes I will go for magnesium sulfate IV injection over 20 minutes. That is 40 mg per kg single dose. Then not responding within 15 minutes of con uh, completion of magnesium sulfate. I will discuss with the on-call pediatric consultant. Then I will give Salbutamol, one to two micrograms per kg continuous infusion.
fusion. If not responding, I will increase to five micrograms per kg per minute for one hour. Then then reduce back to two micrograms per kg per minute. If requiring more than two micrograms per kg per minute, admit to HDU or PDU depending upon the severity of the illness. Continue with oxygen and continuous salbutabol nebulizer while awaiting for infusion to be made up. Prednisolone 0.5 mg per kg oral. Less than two years, 10 mg once daily. Two to five years, 20 mg once daily. More than five years, 30 mg once daily. These are all the doses. Subsequent management, For, follow the algorithm of management of acute wheezing in children. Previous history, when recovering, ask about previous episodes of wheezes, similar episodes, triggering factors, seasonal variation, nocturnal cough, family history of asthma, hay fever, eczema, other atopy, smokers in the family, days of school because of asthma, number of courses of prednisolone used in last year, pets, drug history, especially any bronchodilators, inhaled corticosteroids or their effect, particularly need of use of beta-2 agonists. Discharge follow-up, SpO2 in air more than 94%. Respiratory rate, age less than 45 years, less than 40 per minute. 5 to 12 years, less than 30 per minute, 12 to 18 years, 25 minutes. 